myself. Which function was used? You already answered it. So after we work on this problem, I will give you the reason behind it. There are two reasons, actually, why we study transformations. It's pretty much like, why do I need to factor? I can use a quadratic formula. I can do other things. True. But factoring will solve uh, equations and rational equations like this instead of having to worry about other methods. The same thing with transformations. It will give us a skill, and I'll explain which skill. So two reasons in a minute after we do this. Good. Now, the first transformation is on the squared of x. Which transformation is that? Yes, the square root of x plus 4. Do I change x or do I change y? Yes, I'm changing x into x plus 4, which means a horizontal shift. Where do I go with this function? Very good. So this is left 4. Number 2. Now, I know you're going to say you multiply this by negative 2. This is the normal step. However, I have to break that into two steps because there are two transformations in here. The first transformation is 2 times the square root of x plus 4, and the third <coughs> one is negative 2 times the square root of x plus 4. And you can say, but I never do this. Hold your thought just one second. I never do this. I don't, when I have to multiply by negative 2, I don't say I multiply by 2 and then I multiply by negative 1. I go ahead and multiply by negative 2. However, there are two transformations in there. Please. It doesn't matter which one you get first. Uh, if you want to do the difference first, and they, uh, that's fine too. But I prefer stretching first, but you, they are exactly the same level. I prefer stretching and then flipping. Because then you flip and you have to stretch. And it's a little bit more difficult. I recommend stretching first and then flipping. But it's up to you. Uh, both are acceptable. So what does this do to this function? Am I changing x? No. So I'm changing y. It's outside. The number does not touch x. So what does this do to that? Vertical stretching by a factor of 2. So I'm saying vertical stretching. Now this is a transformation on this. What does this function do to this? Am I changing x? No. What am I changing? Right. Reflect with respect to WRT, the x-axis. And final transformation is negative 2, the square root of x plus 4 plus 3. What does this function do to this? Very good. Vertical shift of 3 units. Let's graph this, and then I would like to give you the two reasons why it's a good idea to understand transformations. First of all, by now, we know all these functions, almost. We didn't use all of them, but a few of them constantly. OK, so I have to graph the square root of x. So here's the square root of x. Then you told me to shift this graph 4 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then you told me to stretch this graph by a factor of 2. Here's how I, yes, yes, please. Oh, yes, sorry. But does it make a difference of whether or not the, um, the second line you just drew that crosses the y-axis? But it has to. Okay, so that's... It has to, because imagine, look, look at this. I have this graph. This is my graph. And I shift it to the left 4. Can I cross it? Can I truncate it? Can I... No. It has to be the same thing. See? Yes, please. Yes. There must have a, yes, I'm sorry, yes. Good, so that's number one. A horizontal shift, four units to the left. Now, here's how I determine this. I will say this has to be doubled. This piece, doubled. So that's 
my two, the square root of x plus four. And number two is done. Then it told me to reflect. I am going to reflect the red graph. So this is negative two, the square root of x plus four. As the final shape, you said up, <coughs> you said up three. One, two, three. It's this point right here. As parallel as possible. As you notice, I don't, I don't have the x and y intersects. This is not a perfect graph. This is just to give us the shape quickly. So this is the final graph. And that is negative 2, the square root of x plus 4 plus 3. Now I want to give you two reasons why we do this. Yes, please. Uh, with negative 2 in front, how come you can't just reflect it with respect to the x-axis two units? Like, is it just a rule like you have to evaluate it like with just the 2 square root of the 4 and then the negative? Because of the order of operations. So if I'm asked to evaluate this function, let's say, for x equals 4, I will have to perform this operation first, of course, also taking the square root. Then I will multiply by 2, which is a vertical stretching. Then I will multiply by negative 1. When I'm done, I add 3 to the result. So vertical um, a horizontal shift of 4 to the left, vertical stretching by a factor of 2, reflection with respect to the x-axis, up 3. That's why we put them here in the order in which we have to present them here on the graph. Is that better? Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, so let me give you um, two reasons why transformations are important. Here's a graph for you. Here's a graph. I don't have to do anything. I know the shape already. It's x squared. Where do I shift it? Two units to the left. Two units to the left. What do I do next? And then I go? I don't need any graphing calculator. I already have this in my head. By knowing and understanding transformations x squared, 2 to the left, reflect, down 4. What is the vertex? Right? We don't even have the graph. What is the vertex of this function? x squared, to the left, 2, reflect, down 4. Negative 2, because we shifted to the left. Negative 2, comma, without doing anything. No calculator, no graphing, no paper, nothing. Please. That's one reason. Go ahead. Max or min? Max. Oh yes. Yes. The final function. The final function. So x squared to the left two reflect down four. It's negative two comma negative four. Thank you. So that why that's why this is one idea. I don't need to graph, right? We will in a minute, but I know the graph right away. The shape. Do I know the exact x and y intercept? No. For example, the x-intercept doesn't even exist. Did I calculate the y-intercept? No. But I know how the graph looks like. And this will be valid for everything we do, as long as they are of this type. So here's the graph of x squared. Here's the graph of x squared plus 2. So this is x squared. This is x plus 2 squared, I meant to say. Then I reflect, and then down 4. Reflect. So negative x plus 2 squared, and then down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So when we get to chapter 3, oops, I meant this. When we get to chapter 3, this will be a piece of cake for you. So now the vertex one more time, which is the, in this case max, what? 
Very good. Negative 2, negative 4. Here's the second reason why it's nice to know. Let's say maybe all of you, maybe many of you will end up working for NASA. And let's say you have a collection of data. You have a data set. You plot the data set. I like this graph from the book. Let's say you plot the data set. And this is what the points will show you. Now, do you know what kind of function will fit this? Exactly. So is there a left and right shift? No. There is only, it's potentially a vertical stretch or shrinking that's possible, but it's definitely an up whatever. So by simply plotting a data set, if the functions that we discussed, which we will discuss more functions in chapter 3 and 4, um, make any sense, then you can immediately say, oh, I know. And I can predict whatever. It can be blood pressure, it can be temperature, it can be a lot of things. So it's a good skill to have. I have finished everything in um, from chapter 1 and 2.1 through 2.5. So now we either go back to that uh, document or you say, for the rest of the time, I want you to do this, 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 this. Or we go back to the document. Is there a particular type of problem that you would say, I need to see it, see another example now? OK, so let's look at the document. I think I still have a copy. Do you all have a copy? Is that a yes? Is that a no? Yes. 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 I have plenty because I made a little more copy. Here it is. Anyone? One, two. Say it again. Yeah. Seven, one, two. You also. And three. Very good. Okay. My pleasure. So please choose because we will not be able to finish in roughly 20 minutes. But we will have to finish it on Thursday. I'm kindly, kindly asking you to work on all these problems so then we can do this quickly on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So before you are going to get the instructions for the test, the test will look like this. Only because you're working in my math lab and I hope you're going to finish everything between now and Tuesday. So you're used to seeing something like this. However, the reason I'm saying or the point I'm making here is this. I don't want to see any work on, on this paper. I don't care, and I'm not going to look if you put anything in here. It doesn't mean anything to me. Everything has to be on scratch paper. This is what I grade. You're going to get the instructions for the test again, but I, since we're here, I don't care about any of this. Should you read it? Yes, because it gives you some hints, I'm sure. And you remember from working on in my math lab. So please read it. But... I don't want to see any, I mean, you can, but I'm not going to grade this. I'm only going to grade every work, every line that you present. So if it says, uh, use transformations, and, and you say, let's say, on the last problem, this, I cannot give any credit. You have to show me all these steps, and that's what, how you get credit. Okay? <laughs> so this means nothing to me. I want this to, to present this to you because it will give you some hints, it will give you an idea, it will trigger your memory on something that you looked at in my math lab, and this will be helpful, I think. Okay? But just choosing a graph is zero points, yes. Which one? 
just mention mention the formula that we uh, we should be given to you. You cannot say the quadratic equation because that is from fifth grade. Uh, the uh, difference quotient will be given to you. You don't have to memorize that. What are the formulas? The slope intercept form, no, is this from fifth grade. The point slope form is from fifth grade. I didn't learn any of that. <laughs> Let's go back to the fifth grade then. I'm just kidding. I didn't even learn that in high school. So this is awesome. This is the right time. This is the right time. That's okay. Can you, you give us these equations so we can write them on the back of our study guides? Yes, them? you should go through all, everything we've studied anyway. Yes, so let's write down and I want you to look for them. Number one, everything about lines. You go back to last lecture, everything about lines. Everything. Slope, uh, positive slope, negative slope, uh, y equals mx plus b, the point slope form, par parallel perpendicular, everything about lines. And it's summarized last time. Uh, quadratic formula. Factoring. The difference quotient will be given to you. <coughs> I can't think of anything else. How to solve linear equations? There is nothing. How to solve quadratic uh, other than the quadratic formula? Uh, completing the square, we have to know all the steps for completing the square. Um, taking square roots. So everything about solving quadratic equations. Quadratic formula, taking square roots, completing the square, and factoring. Yes? Oh, of course. Of course. If you don't have your calculator, you can borrow mine. That will be fine. Yes, it's nothing sophisticated whatsoever. Everything what we did in class. How many times did I use a calculator? Okay, so anything else? How to solve a linear inequality? Um, how to present the interval notation? I can't think, think of any other formula other than lines and the quadratic formula. I don't think there is anything else that we looked at. And the difference quotient will be given to you. Is there anything else you can think of? Can you think of anything else that we should look at? Okay, so uh, which problems you would like to, or which problem would you like to start? We can start in order, or you can skip, or... That's fine, very good. So we have 2 divided by x plus 3 plus 3 divided by x minus 4 equals 21 over x plus 3 times x minus 4. Again, I highly recommend the next week review everything we've done in class. Everything. All problems. And that will give you confidence. I guarantee you'll finish the test in less than 50 minutes. But only if you find the time to review everything we did in class. Till you understand it and you're able to reproduce it. Okay, perfect. So uh, my first question to myself is, okay, I'm given an equation. What type of equation is it? Say it again. Okay. It, can this be a linear equation? Can this be linear? <coughs> it's a rational equation. It has x in the denominator. This could not be linear. If there is x in the denominator, this equation cannot be linear. So obviously, it's rational. Now I have to remember what to do, how to find or how to solve a rational equation. OK, and I remember that uh, one option is, uh, one step for, uh, is to move everything to one side. The second step is I have to write restrictions. Then I have, I have to find the least common denominator. Then I have to change it into a proportion. Then I have to cross multiply. And then I have to find x. A lot of steps. So that's why one problem would not be good enough to build your confidence. So please, we, we had at least six problems like this one. So first I have to write that x does not equal perfect and that x does not equal 
Awesome. If you're using this method, if you have a different one, use the different one, I'm fine. Then you will change or you will move the term or the fraction from the right hand side to the left hand side. But if I forget to write zero, then I will not solve. Thank you. Okay. The next step would be, you can if that's what you want. Yes, I accept the method. I accept any method. But in my case, I will not multiply. I will find the least common denominator, which is x plus 3 times x minus 4. All different factors must be in the least common denominator. That's good. That's fine. So then I need to find the necessary adjustments. I cannot write 2 plus 3 minus 21. That would be a terrible mistake. So what is the adjustment for the top of the first one? Very good. What is the adjustment for the top of the first, second one? Very good. Awesome. And the last one? Great. So again, you have to practice this and always at each step of the way, ask yourselves the questions that I, I know I sound like a broken record. You don't have to tell me. I know that. But in the hope that you will remember the steps. That's why I repeat myself over and over. Good. Can anyone give us the numerator? Very good. We distribute 2 to these two. Now we distribute positive 3 to these two. And then, is this OK? Remember doing this before? Please redo those problems for confidence. OK, so now my next step is, yes. So I have 5x. This is positive 1. Minus 21 is negative 20 over x plus 3, x minus 4 equals 0 over 1. <coughs> It's OK if you decide to multiply both sides, but just be very careful. I don't present that method for many reasons. But you may say, I don't like this. I like the other one. Fine. OK. So now this is a proportion. What do I do with, with a proportion and only in a proportion? Perfect. So then I have 5x minus 20 times 1 is 5x minus 20 equals, very good. Linear equation, this is linear. Move 20, divide by 5, and I get x equals 4. And I ask myself something very important. Yes, but instead of checking, because I'm lazy, I'd rather do what I just did. I would not plug it in, because I don't want to do that. I already stated the restrictions. I worked hard to do this, not really. But, but I have this. And I'll say, this? Absolutely not. And what do I conclude? Very good. OK, next problem. Five x plus seven squared equals 90. Yes, I will read the requirement. Solve the equation by the square root property. Very clear. OK, now what do I do with this? Very good. This is an absolutely mandatory step. Why? Because I want to simplify. And I can't take the square root if I don't. Good. So then I have x plus 7. Everything squared will equal uh, almost 18. Very good. Only now I'm ready to do what? Very good, awesome. How many solutions do we have to get? Perfect. Please remember, I would, I would personally, on my test paper, I will write two solutions because that will trigger my memory. And if I forget, then I will, should ask myself, wait a minute, did I get two solutions or not? So yes, we take the square root. The left-hand side is x plus 7, and the right-hand side Very good, indeed. Otherwise, I will not get two solutions. 
So I have the square root of 18, which has to be presented as a perfect squared multiplied by the rest. So what is the square root of 9? And the square root of 2 has to stay as the square root of 2. So I will replace, um, I didn't mean to replace, I will move 7 to the other side, and I did get the two solutions as I expected. Very good. Any questions? Is this okay so far, everything? Okay, awesome. So let's look at number three. In number three, we have x squared minus 6x equals negative 2. And of course, I will read the requirement. Solve the quadratic equation by completing the square. OK. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, there is no need to separate them because we cannot simplify because of the square root. If this was missing, then I would have had to separate them. Negative 7 plus 3 and negative 7 minus 3. Right, I know, I know, because I think the system cannot comprehend, or you may not have plus or minus sign in the, uh, in the menu. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I haven't looked. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. I don't need you to separate the solutions unless they can be simplified. But yes, I know my math lab does that to you. If you type in something wrong, just shoot me an email and I'll change your grade. I don't want you to do it again. That's not a problem. That's not the point here. OK, so it, for this equation, we are asked to solve using completing the square. So now I have to remember the method. There are four steps. First, I have to identify the Mm, middle coefficient. What is it? Negative 6. Now I have to divide it by 2. What do I get? Perfect. Now I have to square negative 3. Awesome. And this is the number I need to add to both sides. I will rewrite the equation. Here's the equation now. Now, from the first day of classes when I tortured you with that uh, handout, I hope that you still remember it and you do not FOIL, because if we FOIL, it's going to be difficult to come up with the left-hand side. That's why I want you to move away from FOILing for the special product. So now, what squared is this? Indeed. How many terms do I get when I square x minus 3? Three terms. The first term squared minus 2 times the first times the second plus the second term squared. That's why, moving forward, please look at the problems we did in class. After I return the test, I'm going to beg you for one more step, which is moving forward every weekend. Put aside a, an hour, an hour and a half, and redo each, and t each test. Two days before the final exam, you're going to say, I don't have anything to review. Because I've been reviewing for 10 weeks already. Each test, every weekend. And you can say, it's a breeze. OK? So once I return your test, graded test, please do that. Put it on your calendar. Every weekend, I promise myself to redo my tests. All three, for now, just one. Later on, two. And later on, three. OK, good. So obviously, we cannot solve using the quadratic formula. What do I do? Not the quadratic formula. Completing the square. What do I do now? Take the square root. Very good. So this is x minus 3. And I have to think for a moment. Indeed, plus or minus the square root of 7. So this is x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 7. That's all you need to do. I don't I don't care. You don't separate them because, yes, please. I don't understand at all how The steps are middle coefficient, negative 6, divided by 2, negative 3, square negative 3. 
Okay. First day of classes. Okay, that's good. So in the first day of classes, we square this, and we said we are not going to FOIL it. Can you FOIL it? Yes. Will you get full credit if you FOIL it? Of course. Will you fall behind if you do? Of course. And you will always have this question. So this is the first term squared plus 2 times the first times the second plus the second term squared. That's why we divide by 2 to determine this number. So that's why we divide negative 6 by 2 because of this. Then we get negative 3. Then we square it to get this. And this is the number we have to add to both sides. So please understand moving forward, this is wise to do. To understand this formula, and go back to the first day. Come in early on Thursday if you can. I would like to help you. Whatever. We, we can stay after class now if you want to. Not everyone. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you have questions, I'll be more than happy to sit down with you. Okay. So coming back, it's negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. I square negative 3 and I get 9. This is the number, which is this. Of course, if I have minus here, I have minus here and minus here. That I need to add to both sides. So on the right-hand side, I had negative 2 plus 9, which is 7. On the left-hand side, I have x squared minus 6x plus 9. Remember, it has to be on both sides. Otherwise, I change the problem. It would be a mistake to add 9 to one side and not to the other. OK. <coughs> Is this better? I'll be more than happy to sit down with you after class, and we can work on some problems. OK. Um, I do have uh, one minute. So in one minute, let me choose. Here is one minute of a problem, right here. This is, should be one minute. Use intercepts to graph the equation. Uh, 7x minus 6y plus 42 equals 0. There is no need to solve for y. There is no need to find a uh, slope. There is no need. We only have to set x equal to 0. I covered it. 42 becomes negative 42, and I divide by negative 6. So therefore, y equals... That's it, 0, 7. The other one, y equals 0. I covered it. I move 42, it becomes negative, and I divide by 7. So x equals negative 6, so negative 6, 0. And this is it. All I have to do is plot these two points, connect, and extend the line. 0, 7 is somewhere here after I make sure that I measure. And this is the line. And I write 7x minus 6y plus 42 equals 0. Any questions for me? Yes. Yeah. 